And screw you guys, you didn't like it. So we wanted to get together to discuss Obi-Wan Kenobi. For the most part, I'm disappointed, but there are some cool moments. Yeah, there are some cool, cool moments. It's an aggravating thing for me because there is a lot of stuff in it that I actually enjoy. And it just makes me really dislike the things that bother me even more because they really feel like forced errors. I just don't think that it should have been set 10 years after the Sith. I agree. I think it should have been set maybe like four to five. Five max, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, because yeah, absolutely. You... I, I have a hard time seeing this Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan in 10 years looking like Alec Guinness. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where it was a lot easier in Revenge of the Sith. Okay, you know. There's some time passed, but we're this is the halfway mark right here. Right, this is the halfway mark. And then so <clears throat> there's obviously we're gonna get into spoilers. I mean I, I think that's pretty much a given. Yeah, but we don't we don't do non spoiler videos. Yeah. We're not patience for that. And we don't have this scripted, we're just kinda of going off the I see you have notes. But I, I have they're a just notes. notes. They're yes. not scripted, so we're just gonna just talk about things that just pop in our head. Basically in this in this in this show, Vader learns to let go of of Obi Wan Kenobi because it, it ends up being a hindrance to him uh, going to that next level of being a badass Sith. We'll just dumb it down, I guess. So when you set it 10 years like in between, that means you had 10 years of Vader not being reaching his potential. It, it just goes back to the idea, I just don't think it should have been set 10 years after just four to five tops. And that's just my opinion. Well, I think that's a dumb premise to begin with. You know, his, his need for revenge for Obi-Wan, you would think would make him stronger in the dark side. And drive him further to being the ultimate Vader. You know, that's not the way they put it, but I think that that makes a little bit of sense. There's a lot of ambiguity when it comes to, like, the Force and, you know, character motivations in Star Wars. It's like, okay, yeah, the dark side uh, relies heavily on those really, you know, um, strong emotions like, like anger and, and fear and... The need for revenge maybe there's you know a part of vader that's just attached to obi-wan kenobi not just because of just pure revenge because as we saw and well, i guess we're just jumping the gun here but when that very last episode you could see that anakin was coming through that's true and the way they really portrayed that was when the blue yeah, yeah. went over his face i liked that yeah yeah it's not all about revenge maybe he still has just a little bit of a little bit that I don't think that ever left, though. I think when Luke sensed it in him, he was sensing something that had never truly left him. Yeah, So maybe. that doesn't mean that you're not going to have an all-powerful Vader. I mean, look what he did in that last episode. Yeah, yeah, but you can try, but maybe not, not succeed. Like, the Emperor's trying to let him go of Kenobi because he knows that that's, that's his weakness. Like, because he knows that there's just a tiny fraction that actually still cares about Kenobi. There's certain things in the original movies that were, were left unsaid, kind of implied, and I think that was taken advantage of in this series, specifically Obi-Wan and Leia's relationship. That was never really stated that they didn't know each other, but it's kind of implied, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of jarring to watch Obi-Wan and then go back and watch that original trilogy at this point, you know, because when Obi-Wan dies, mm -hmm. I mean, heck, at this point, if, if you take this as canon, she knows Obi-Wan better than Luke did. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, grieving. When, 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 when yeah. Obi-Wan sacrifices himself, who is the one that's sad? Mm -hmm. Who's the, she's, she's consoling Luke. She's not sad herself. They took the part in A New Hope where Luke first comes in and he goes, I'm here with Ben Kenobi. Big Kenobi, and she's all excited, like she knows who he is. And I think they took that as as a way of saying, like, oh, she knew who he was this whole time. Yeah. It's weird, and it's it is a little jarring when you watch the rest of the the the, uh, the movies afterwards because you're kind of like, ah, that doesn't really jive very well, especially for someone who's who's new to Star Wars and they watch they watch this and then they watch the original trilogy. They're gonna be like, ah, something's not right here. Here's the thing: it really should have just been. Obi-Wan versus Vader. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to make a series like this, which, uh, you know, who's, you probably don't even need to make it anyway, but if you are, just make it about Vader and Obi-Wan. And hell, just make it like four episodes if you need to. Three episodes. Make it a movie yeah. if you need to. There's a part of me that likes the idea that maybe he's turned away from the Force just because of, like, like I'm, I'm thinking, like, he feels so much grief. He feels so much guilt. 
over what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he turned himself off in the force because he was afraid that if he dwelled on these emotions, like it would turn him to the dark side. He would start going to the dark side. So maybe he just kind of like, you know what? I just need to distance myself from the force in general and just kind of like, I'm okay with that. But in the first episode, it, there's so many contradictions because, okay, yeah, he does that. He buries his lightsaber, but then he says Luke needs to be trained. That doesn't make any sense. No. He also says that he's there to protect Luke and watch over Luke. Why are you going to do that if you're not using the Force and have your lightsaber? Yeah, no. The, it doesn't make any sense. The motivations bother me, especially in that first... They're all over the place, aren't they? First of all, <laughs> I can understand him having, like, shell shock from, from the war, but not a decade later. Exactly. Not, not Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. Because you see... I mean, even at the end of Episode 3, he's, he's pretty focused. And it's it's weird too because in, even in this one it doesn't seem like he's lost his focus. He's 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 arguing with with Owen, saying we've talked about this. When the boy's ready, I need to train him. I, you know that's what I'm here well, for. Well, he says, and he needs to be trained. But like, who else is? Of course, who else would it be other than Obi Wan? But but you've turned yourself um, off from the Force. But the scene the scene <laughs> right before that with that Nari Jedi, he's like the Jedi are over. The time of the Jedi are over. You know, just 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 go away and, and lead a normal that, life. It's like okay, yeah. if the Jedi are over, then why are you so focused? on trying to train a new Jedi. You know, it, it it's all, I wish, I really wish they wouldn't have had that scene with that, with that, I guess he would have been a youngling at the time, that, that Jedi that, that found him. <laughs> it, you know what would have been a little bit more interesting, honestly, is, uh, you know, maybe he's weak in the force because he's had no reason to use it because nothing's happened. There's no danger to Luke. He's still going and checking on Luke, it seems, every day. So he's still on his mission, mm -hmm. but, it's like atrophy, you know, you, you don't use your muscles, they, they tend to get weak. That's a little bit more understandable than, oh, I'm trying to hide, so I'm closing myself off from the Force. But also that, I kind of, his attitude would have been more, the, the, big, the stuff at the work. You know what it kind of reminded me of? It kind of reminded me of the beginning <coughs> of, of Joe versus the Volcano, where there all those people are just kind of slowly drudging their way to work every day, like that job has just beat them down. Yeah. And the every day, the average person's life every day going to work just to just to feed your animal and, and have a little bit of extra money just wore him down over a decade. And that's why he is the way he is. Instead of having this high-flying, exciting Jedi life, you know, it's like, oh, this is what regular people do. Well, I, I mean, I'm okay with him just basically accepting, like, it's over. It's we're, We've been defeated. We lost. The Jedi are no more. I'm just going to live a hermit life. And I'm just going to live right here on Tatooine and just kind of like do good and, you know, help whenever I can help out, but really just kind of stay as low-key. I'm not going to do Jedi stuff in front of people, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not going to... But, but yeah, it's it's all part of, like, the I have the issue with is just the contradictions. There's just so many things that don't make sense because it just contradicts each other. Like, you can have that conversation. You can go to Owen's place and basically say, like, hey, you know, I'm just checking on Luke and 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 be like, he has is, is he shown any... You know, Weird stuff, like mm -hmm. in the force, being curious if it's manifesting itself, but not just being like, "Oh, I'm going to train you," or "He needs to be trained." When you've established that you're no longer even uh, using the force anymore, it's like, I'm okay with either one, but just stick with either one. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that, that's all I'm saying. I would have been that. happy if you would have told that Nari character, um, "Hey." stay low because we really don't know what we're doing right now you know we're just waiting and we're trusting in the force to see what happens um not we lost give up it's over with kid you know it's just like that's that's not obi-wan it's yeah. like okay so so what are you doing here he's back and forth and 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 that's well see i'm okay with the, I, i'm okay with the shell shock attitude if it's like two or three years afterwards mm -hmm. he's still feeling that Obi-Wan's resilient yeah. enough, though, it's where he would get over that within a few years. Yeah. And focus on the job at hand. He wouldn't be all, oh, woe is me. So if I was just going to, you know, and look, I'm not telling, I'm not saying I'm some amazing writer, because I'm not. But if I was going to say, if, if somebody put me in charge of like, hey, here is, we're going to do this Vader <clears throat> um, and Obi-Wan series. Here you go. Blank page. Just write it. Here's what I would do. Okay. What's it going to be about? In Return of the Jedi, when Luke is trying to redeem his father... And Vader says, Obi-Wan once thought as you did. Yeah. Obi-Wan once thought as you did should be the premise for the entire series. Yeah. That's what it should be. It should be like, okay, it's a couple of years after 
Revenge of the Sith. Obi-Wan thinks that Vader's dead. Oh, Anakin is dead. Then somehow, some way, he finds out, that, oh no, this guy running around in a big, scary black suit, that's Vader. And he's still alive. And, and then he has so much grief over everything that's happened, he thinks to himself, I, I can if I can get Anakin to turn back to the light side, I can I can I can redeem everything that's happened. Mm-hmm. I can change everything. I can I can turn uh, right what every what went wrong. It would have been nice if there was more of an attempt at that from over. Exactly, and that's and that's what I really hated about the last. I, I, I liked the last episode, but what I really hated was there's no there wasn't enough dialogue in between them, and. Uh, uh, Obi Wan really should have just pleaded with him. It's like Anakin, I know there's still good in you. I know yeah. there's still good in you. If you really hammer that home, and he still doesn't get what, through, what would have been great is if his dialogue would have mirrored more of what Luke was doing. To exactly. Him. And you see how Obi Wan wasn't able to get it through him, but his son was. It really makes what Luke did even more impactful because you see how that someone. That was really close to, even closer, the way closer to Anakin, to, to Anakin than Luke ever was. Couldn't even get him mm-hmm. to do it. Exactly, and it would have made that line Obi Wan thought as as, as you, you did. Know, once, once it would have made that did. more impactful. It would have made that way more impactful because you 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 base a whole series around that. So he somehow the, from the series you get from point A to point B. Point A being um, Obi Wan still shell shock, shell shock two three years after. Revenge of the Sith learns that Vader's still alive. Learns that this guy is Vader, who's basically the Emperor's right hand man. Says that you know what, I'm I'm gonna go try to redeem him, and you get from that point A to point B and to that final confrontation. And I guess Vader has to lose technically because, you know, that line in New Hope when when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master, and I, and I think that that that's what they tried to do with the whole at the end of that episode because the Emperor basically says, hey, you need to let go of Obi-Wan Kenobi. So in it, they're basically saying Vader's still learning at that point. I think that's why they, how they tried to shoehorn that that line in because that line always, you could tell, always meant were, to... I think there were some reshoots. I, I, yeah, there had to... There were some shots that, like, it seemed like they were... They had enough time because they were hearing the complaints that people justified complaints and and they tried to, to do some reshoots and answer... Um, and, and I think that's kind of why a lot of people were complaining about some of the special effects being kind of cheesy and stuff. Some of them were so bad. I think it was because it was rushed and they just they didn't have time because there were last minute changes. I and swear. It's like, do what you need to do. Some of them look like some of the effects I do in the cartoons. Like you, you, like it looked like it took a JPEG and then like like the ship just like the ship landing is just like a uh, a still JPEG. I, I think they and it goes down and then and then they just animated just a tiny bit. It yeah. just looks so weird. I I think that's what it was. I think it was it was just they ran out of time completely because they had these changes come in, you know, at the eleventh hour and they were like, this is all we can do. Honestly, I think they told the wrong story. I think the story <coughs> honestly should have been revolving around the lead up to the final showdown with Darth Maul is what I think this series should have been. I think that was the more natural story to tell and it it just amazes me that Lucasfilm slash Disney decided to waste that in a cartoon. Uh, yeah, did. yeah, and I think the reason they didn't do that because it was already in, in Rebels. They and... should have saved that for live action and and yeah. when, when that happened in Rebels I was stunned because I thought for sure this is too good to do in a cartoon, this has yeah. to be something done in live action. But but, but you know, I I don't mind the Vader versus the or Anakin. I I like the dynamic between getting Obi Wan and Vader Anakin to be. I just wish there was more of it. That's like, the thing, though. Is it's so, like they, there, there was so much character stuff they could have done between those two, and it was completely when wasted. You have this third main character that you have to spend time on. Yeah. It takes away from what the true story should be, and it, it that's the thing that really kind of made me really have negative feelings about the Reva characters is they kept saying, look over here, look over here, when you wanted to look over here at the guy who's the series is actually named after. And and especially in that last episode when they're having that fight and then they cut back to Reva on, on Tattoo. Reva wow. has nothing to do. That was so jarring. They have nothing to do. To, to, just to go, why do... Because that was so an- anticlimactic. It was, it, was, it, was, I... it was so obvious at that point how, how weak that character and her story was when you were cutting back and forth between Obi-Wan, Vader, and her going into to yeah, the Lars it, it, Yeah, and it's, 
she had nothing to do other than just go kill Luke to get revenge. But, but first of all, how did she know Vader was his kid? She heard the message from what's his face. All the message said was like, "I'm gonna go to Tatooine to see the boy." Hadn't said nothing about. Oh yeah, and by the way, <laughs> don't tell anybody Luke is uh, Vader's son. Well, even before yeah, that, how, her first try, she's able to find Obi Wan when she's listening to the Grand Inquisitor and everybody else, they're failing for 10 years, her first try, she finds him immediately. It's such a convoluted story when it could have just been just boiled down to be much, much simpler. I mean, one of the best episodes was the first one, even though they had its issues, just because you could, you just saw Obi-Wan walk around doing Obi-Wan things. And there it's was, like, it's there like- There was so much cool character, yeah. ex, you know, exploration they could have done with his character exactly. if there was more time. They exactly. only had six episodes and they're wasting it on on this chase, completely chasing down unrelated storyline. You know what the funny thing is? A youngling who survives, who is bent on revenge, trying to hunt down hunt down Vader, is is kind of an interesting story in and of itself. It just didn't have to be wedged into Obi Wan Kenobi. <coughs> or, I think, or, I think, or or if it did, <coughs> in a much be, in a much better way. Stop! I gotta go get a drink. <clears throat> That character also, like, you saw her story arc coming a mile away. I didn't find her threatening in the least. Why do all the other ones look like creepy aliens? Exactly. <laughs> they all look cool, man. They, the fourth sister, like, if, if, if her character arc was the fourth sister doing it, I would have been like, okay, she looks dangerous. She looks like she could do some damage. She, yeah, she just Reva, looks like a, a normal person. Reva looks like she could be your next door neighbor. It's like... <clears throat> and she's just what? overly angry for no reason, and it just made her annoying. And the funny thing is, even the the other Inquisitors were annoyed with her, you know? And that's like, okay, so if the other Inquisitors are, are annoyed with her, how can people get angry when the fans think the same thing? The Vader <clears throat> uh, um, uh, uh, meshing with the Anakin voice. That was nice. That was one of the coolest things Disney <clears throat> Star Wars has done up until this point. And Deborah Chow, there was, there was some really shiny moments sprinkled throughout this thing uh, the, but not enough to make a cohesive exactly. success and that's what makes you infuriating because there's enough cool things in the show to be like what would what would it have been like if the whole thing was cool like there was so much potential but if they would have played that up more that whole relationship of obi-wan trying i i sense saying echoing the same lines that luke says you know, especially in Jedi, in Jedi and Empire, you know, I sense the good in you still, you know, saying the same exact lines that you hear Luke does. That really would have made the original trilogy more impactful when you say, man, Obi-Wan's tried the same stuff before and he failed. There is a nice moment when, you know, when they are fighting, he knocks off the left side of, of Vader's helmet and you see his face. That mirrored what Ahsoka does in the Rebels cartoon. She knocks the opposite side off. Ahsoka was able to... <coughs> expose half of him obi-wan was able to expose half of a anakin's face but it took his son to basically expose his full face you know neither one take were, the mask off yes okay. neither one of them were able to to succeed whereas his son was able to it's like okay that, that's, that, the, that, that's extremely <clears throat> poetic but at the same time i don't give disney the I don't have enough confidence in Disney to you think say that, that was they an do that. They did it on purpose, yeah. <laughs> but if they would have done more of that type of stuff and really played with that, and again, you only had six episodes, you have limited time, and there was so much time wasted with an unnecessary story thread. If there's a season two, I think it's going to, I think, oh God, I, I really hope that they could get um, Liam Neeson back. Some decent acting scenes. I really hope they're they, able to do okay. that. I really hope they're not stupid enough to have Vader and Obi Wan meet again if they do a season two. Because I think they will. that was wrapped up in a nice little bow. Obi Wan let go of his guilt. No longer has any guilt. That's all wrapped up. Nice little bow. They don't ever need to meet again until if, if until there's a new season hope. two um, predictions. We see Yoda. They have. He can't. Yes, I know. You I know. Have a whole I know. With him on Tatooine again, nobody's gonna like that. I would. But they're not, nobody's going to nobody's going to go for that. I would have been <clears throat> I would have been fine with the whole thing taking place on Tatooine, even though Tatooine is a boring planet. Um, him not going on an adventure would have been fine, but just been like more character driven and not like action of the week. What stuff. if Obi Wan has to go? Um, there's a meetup with Yoda. 
because maybe because they did find out that that Mace is is alive, so they all are going to get together to kind of see what's going on. So three of the strongest Jedi mm -hmm. survived, and they don't do shit. Luke Luke stows away on his ship, and that's why he's <laughs> that's why he's. I love he it said, already. That's why he says he says this place looks looks kind of familiar to me. <laughs> It's like, well, how does it look familiar? Maybe because he was looking out the window, you know? I don't know! Wait, when does he, does he say that in New Hope? He says that, says that in Empire. Oh, that's right. He, he, yeah, it, this place looks familiar. awfully familiar. Oh my God. Somebody, somebody at Disney is watching Empire right now. See that line and go, guys, guys, I got it. We got season two. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my God. Yeah, I, I and, and, then, and then, and then, yeah, at the end of it, they just tell Luke, hey, don't tell anybody about any of this. Just pretend like, hey, if we ever meet again, just pretend like you don't know me. A lot of missed opportunity. A lot of wasted space and time oh. on characters that nobody cared about. Oh, this is a legitimate idea for season <clears throat> two. Okay, so, you know how, like, Obi-Wan has to be trained in order to for his, like, consciousness to survive in the Force? Yeah. And obviously, Qui-Gon did, too. Yeah. And how it's kind of bullshit because Anakin just like became a Force ghost with no training because he was obviously Sith yeah, the I, whole time. I'm kind of wondering how okay, they okay. That so off. well, did we find out in season two? So Obi Wan is training, getting trained by Qui Gon, and then Vader finds out, hey man, these these these, mass, these assholes he, are he, actually on Tatooine. He finds his notebooks. <laughs> yeah, no, he go no no. He's on like he's on Tatooine, and like he goes into the cave. He's about to like. Finally, I will end you, Obi Wan. He's like, no, no, wait, wait! I can teach you how to survive death. And then so they spend they spend the next few episodes just like it's like, whoa, okay. Well, then they call basically they call a truce. <laughs> Dude, this is like bad. Like this is bad <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> <clears throat> this is this is not good. Well, good. It fits right in. <laughs> I think that would have been the only thing to justify this season is, yeah, you see that kind of attempt for Obi-Wan. I think you're right. The attempt by Obi-Wan to kind of bring him back, and it focuses 90% on that. 90% on that. Instead of what we got, Inst where it, was, it really did almost seem like an afterthought. It, it, in a, it, it, in a it series really called Obi-Wan Kenobi. Sometimes I think writers, like, really, like big-time Hollywood writers, I think sometimes they can get kind of caught up in just trying to be like, prove how clever of a writer they are yeah as opposed to just like what's a story that makes sense and also and also i will say that there has to be a lot of bullshit with especially a company like disney but any studio coming back and being like that's good but we have got to have these beats in it we have got to have this in it we've got to have that in it because this is going to get this is going to get us subscriptions it's got a. This is too boring. It just you know half the half the season is set on Tatooine. We can't do that. We got to go on adventures. Like it, no, I we hear gotta, you. We got to. We got to. They, they just have their. Sense. They absolutely have their hands in it. And I would not be surprised mm. if like a lot of the reasons why some of these shows like the the scripting is just so convoluted, especially like in this life. I bet you anything. It's like there are multiple people within the hierarchy of Lucasfilm and Disney throwing their two cents in. Being like, okay, yeah, but I want this, and then I want that, right? And then so, you, as a writer, you have to be like, okay, now nah, I gotta connect this dot to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. I wasn't planning on having that in there, but I have to now shoehorn this in there. All right, well, cool. Um, e, I guess if you liked it, then good for you. At least you got something out of it. I don't know. I guess I, we're I, both. I'm, we're if both kind of like. It, I'm, I'm happy for you, and I'm kind of jealous because I really wish. I really wish that I could say this is one that is is like put in and watch you know over and over again. I don't know if I could watch it again. Yeah. I might watch clips again. Clips. You know? yeah, hey, edit edit, edit uh, our own like thirty minute yeah, version. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and screw you guys. You didn't like it. No, let us know what you thought about the series below. Yeah. Comment and all that good YouTube stuff because you know it helps out anyway. Peace. Yeah. Have a good good day.